About three months ago, all around North America, all around the world even, you had officials grabbing these great big reins and pulling, whoa, Nelly, pulling those reins, bringing everything almost to a standstill. The fallout, we still can't measure it. It's still absolutely devastating for some people. It is difficult to wake up in the morning and go through the unknowns because we did bring things to a pretty solid standstill because of this pandemic. But some things didn't stop. It would be nice to think that, whoa, when you pulled on those reins, all of the crime stopped too. All of the people who were doing things they shouldn't be doing, they stopped as well. But that's never the case. And when it comes to something like sex trafficking or human trafficking, this has been continuing, and it kind of find slippery ways to continue to operate and continue to subject a number of people to things that we can't even imagine. So it's important to have conversations like the one we're about to have. And it's important to have people like Kelly Tell and Franklin in our world. Kelly is one of the most amazing people you will ever meet. And you get a chance to meet her right now. I enjoy any time I get to talk with her or communicate with her. She is the founder of Courage for Freedom, which is a Canadian-based organization. It exists to educate, train, and certify frontline and community service providers on strategies, proven ones, and prevention tactics and it serves vulnerable victims of human trafficking and sexually exploited, exploited girls. Kelly's involved in a number of other things. I could list them off, but we wouldn't have time to speak with her. And I really want to do that. Kelly, thank you for taking some time for us. Really great to jump on a call with you today, Mike. Well, let's begin with what the Ontario government has done this week, and then we'll get into some of the other things that have continued to happen in either sex trafficking or human trafficking. We did hear an announcement that they are going to invest $46 million. It's going to be over a five-year period. It's going to go to community-based and Indigenous-specific supports. It's going to help target child and youth victims of sex trafficking. What do you see here in this $46 million investment over five years? Well, first, we are are coming into a time in anti-human trafficking in Ontario that the first announcement in March was the largest in the country. And it, and it needed to be because 60% of all the human trafficking in Canada was purported to start in Ontario. We were a little worried Uh, even though it was a $307 million announcement, that we weren't addressing the 68 to 72% of the concerns that are heard uh, across the province from every community, every demographic, that 68 to 72% of the trafficking in our province is reported as with minors. And just to ensure, we kept advocating and Thankfully, the Associate Minister Jill Dunlop and Jennifer Richardson at the Provincial Anti-Human Trafficking Office, the Solicitor General, Sylvia Jones, under Doug Ford, they were listening. They did their homework and they heard our concerns. And so this is another announcement on top of that, that the specific funds are exactly what Courage for Freedom was advocating for, that they need to be for the youth and the families. They needed to be additional funds. But if you do the math, it's $9 million a year. That's what it works out to. It's still still not enough, but we are definitely moving in the right direction. And it's being um, allocated to the right community. When 68 to 72% are minors, um, a lot of money needs to be put in that area. Um, and, it, and this is a crucial announcement. It's timely. It's probably the most comprehensive plan we've had historically, not only in Ontario, uh, but in the anti-human trafficking movement. And I can tell you the pioneers and the survivors that have done the work are just excited that it's survivor-led. Okay, let's focus in on that for a minute. What is the importance of it being survivor-led? Well, You know, like anything else, if you have lived experience in something, it's easier to make a connection to whatever an issue is, specifically the trauma piece um, that that needs to be the mainstay for the care. Um, Also, you need to move that forward through the awareness. 
if you start to understand what led somebody uh, to be coerced and exploited into human trafficking, and especially when it's minors, it's sexually exploiting them. It's child sexual exploitation. And one of the things that we're understanding, you know, even the Canadian Coalition for the Rights of Children is demanding more comprehensive and centralized data on these issues because we are still just starting to have the informed discussions and understanding the prevalence. And that's the way um, that we're going to have more effective strategies. We're going to be able to do more prevention and intervene and meet the demands of caring for these. These are our children, Mike. They're kids. When you start to understand that the age of entry is 13 and it's from every demographic, we start to understand that as Ontarians and in our local communities and as Canadians, that it's our job to eradicate this. So, And when survivors speak up and they come to the table and for us, we have minor age victims that have given us uh, lots of information and the government has listened to what we're speaking about in stakeholder roundtables during the last eight months. And now we're able to put some stuff in place with this strategy. That's excellent. We're talking with Kelly Talon Franklin, founder of Courage for Freedom, best-selling author. And like I said, we could sit here and talk about all of the things that Kelly is involved in, but you have certainly been an advocate in this area. And to hear this sounding like a, a victory is very, very good. When we look at what we need to do to be more educated about human trafficking and sex trafficking, Kelly, what's something you wish we all knew that maybe we don't? Well, I think the first thing is we need to stop uh, talking about it like the deep, dark secret and get it out into the light and open. And that's exactly what we're doing with the National Awareness Campaign that launches July 30th. And if people want to know, go to courageforfreedom.org. If we help everybody baseline their awareness on exactly what's happening, then people can start taking some industry-specific and community-based training to know how to be the solution. I think that's the key. When we start to understand, you know, the criminals have enjoyed going province to province to province, moving young people at will, and us not being as coordinated as that made their job to uh, sell young boys and girls a lot easier. If we bring the awareness across the country, get people involved, help them to learn in their everyday life how they can help to do something. If we all do something, we will do a lot more collectively. And, you know, that's what all the agencies, the NGOs, people that have been doing this much longer than myself allowed me to engage in. That when we do this collectively, uh, everybody has a role to play. And we can just say, we want to eradicate the buying and selling of kids. Enough is enough. We've had it. Not for sale. Yeah, the idea that that is even a line. I think that's still, that right there probably still strikes a lot deeper than you would want it to. The idea that the buying and selling of kids, oh no, there's there's no such thing as buying and selling of kids. But you (laughs) have seen some of the realities of this. When when you hear buying and selling of kids, or when you say those words, what are you thinking? Well, for myself, first, I'm a survivor. So I understand the concept in real time. But what's more important is to understand it through the eyes and mind and experiences of the minors that are going through it now, if we actually want to help. It's underground. We don't see it. Nobody's standing on a street corner, usually, that's a minor. They're using social means and social media. And during COVID, it actually put young people at higher risk because they're spending more time on screen. And the criminals didn't follow the rules. (laughs) So, you know, they, and you know, we look at the demand when there's a lot of stress in community that um, it ups the game for people to be buying and selling kids because it's profiting when people need money. Really hard to get their head around, but it's, it's an honest truthful thing and it's just really hard to digest because you might not live this experience but you have to trust that we need to do the advocacy and do the education for that neighbor kid next door for somebody that's you know your child your grandchild your niece your nephew and i think there's still a stigma out there kelly that it isn't a neighbor it isn't 
my grandchild. It isn't my child. There's no way. It would, it would be someone who had run away from home. It would be someone who, who did this. We need to get rid of that, don't we? We do, you know, because that's the way we isolate and insulate ourselves um, from, you know, from not recoiling that we need to be responsible for this. And the thing is, we need to ask ourselves, just in our lack of education, are we preventing our neighbors from being able to have that conversation with us and not feel stigmatized that it happened to them? We've seen that happen with mental health and with addiction. Now it's time for that to start happening with human trafficking and sexual exploitation, that we can have intelligent, social, actionable conversations that are going to allow us not to blame anybody else but the people that are buying and selling our kids. And I think we need to have a bigger conversation about who's buying the kids. I think we look to pimps and madams and boyfriend groomers and all those people that make us believe it's just a big, dark issue. But we stopped asking the question, who's buying our children? Somebody's buying the kids. So hopefully with this national awareness campaign, that's stage two. We, we make sure we're all aware. We figure out what we can do to collectively come together, change some of the things. You know, we started with Project Route last year, put a lot of pressure probably on our government, not, not intentionally, just by calling people together at a historic Ontario movement that saw 16-year-old survivors' request of what to put up in an ad and how to include the community, how to include the Ontario, um, you know, Human Trafficking Office, Anti-Human Trafficking Coordination Office, how to include the Canadian Centre to End Human Trafficking's hotline number, teaching people, just put a number in your phone. You know, we want to make it simple enough that we can all be part of the solution. And you need to just not read, bet- you know, you need to read between the lines when you read about articles and ask yourself the question, how is this happening and how can I help? And if you need suggestions, you know, there's organizations in London, there's lots across the province and us, and we love collaborating with as many organizations as we can because the criminals don't like us to do that. <laughs> Kelly, you continue to be amazing. Thank you for the conversation today. Thank you for the work that you're doing. I'm glad to hear this sounds like a victory, but it's a small victory and a big fight. So keep up the big fight. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. And we'll continue to listen for opportunities to share what you fight for on our behalf. If people want to connect, courageforfreedom.org, join the campaign. Kelly, you stay safe. You too, Mike. Take care. Bye for now. That is Kelly Talon Franklin. Uh, Kelly is uh, undoubtedly one of the good ones, and her strength is pretty amazing. And now she's trying to make a big difference. So have a conversation with your kids. And like Kelly pointed it out, there are a lot of people, a lot of people on screens a lot more right now. What are you doing? What do you, you know? Make sure you have that conversation. Hey, who are you? Who are you? Who are you Snapchatting, texting, as my wife likes to ask our kids? Who are you Snapchatting, texting there? And just have it. Make sure that that's an open thing because it is a neighbor. It is a grandchild. It is a child. It is that easy.